I have just done an entire video, complete with interruption because my landlord's getting a delivery to discover that none of it had been taken. So I'm having to do this with a front facing camera. Right, darning. You want to know how to darn? This is a demonstration sock. It doesn't actually have a hole in it. Um, it had a thin patch, which I kind of mended. However, the other one has got a, a, a lovely smart red darn on the toe because I made a whole video. So this one can have one too. Right, things you need. You need to have a suitable needle. Now, let's see if I can get it. Those are darning needles. They've got a very big eye to them, but they do have a sharp point because you might be going through things where you need to have a point to the needle. The other thing that you can use is what's called knitter's needles. Now, they're not knitting needles, which are the long pins that you use to knit with. But after people have done the knitting, they're what they use to sew the sleeves and stuff on with. And they have a blunt point to them. So if you're darning a knitted jumper, you might find a knitter's needle is an easier version. But use what you can get. You will also need thread. Now, because I'm now going to have to do this on camera, I'm going to get a bigger needle because I'm blind and I can never bloody thread them. You're going to need some yarn to do it with. Yarn. Now, I actually mostly use embroidery thread because it's quite thick. You don't want to use anything too fine. It's quite thick and it's quite soft and you can get it in a variety of colours colours and it's it's cheap and easy to buy it's usually made out of cotton the other alternative is to use darning wool now this is actually tapestry wool um, I bought it in a charity shop for about 30p if you use wool it will shrink when you cook uh, when you wash it and sometimes that's useful if you're darning socks and they go thin on the toe sometimes having a little shrelt uh, a little felted shrunk patch over where the hole is can actually be useful because that's quite hard wearing. But I'm not going to use this. I'll use the bright red yarn on a pale pink sock so you can see what I'm doing. Now, the first thing is you need quite a long length of thread. And so I'm going to get quite a long piece of thread. And cut off the end and thread my needle. Now, this is where you hear muffled swearing off. I'll keep my mug hidden. Right. Now I'm fortified with tea. I'm going to thread my needle. There we go, because I've got a hulking great big needle. I'm going to pull it through because it's easier doing any sewing with a shorter length. But you just have to be aware that as you go, you pull the needle out. Otherwise, you'll start sewing with a double thread. Now, you will have seen one of these before. They're called darning mushrooms. You also get darning eggs. I actually use something else when I'm darning called a speed wee balloon, which is an expensive answer and I'm not going to go into it. But if you want to look them up, they're called speed weave and weave is spelt W-E-V-E. -E. What you do is you turn your sock inside out. There's a reason for that. I'll show you in a minute. Turn your sock inside out. Get your darning mushroom and your darning egg and drop it into the sock and to the point where the hole is and then you centre the hole. Now, to make sure that your thread doesn't come out, you need to fasten it in. And some of you will have got this idea that you can tie a knot in the end. Don't bother. That's, that won't work. It'll pop through and it'll be really bloody annoying. So, first thing you do is you make sure that the business end of your thread is going to stay put and I do that by pulling it through and just tying a reef knot. Once it's tied that thread's not coming out in a hurry. I don't know if I'm now doing a reef or a granny. Doesn't matter. It's just a knot to protect it from coming through. Yeah. Nice and tight. Just a knot. Now you are literally weaving a little piece of something to cover the hole. So you go up. Now I'm going to do a small darn and widely spaced. But when you do it, you want to try and do 
the threads nice and close together. But when you first start, don't worry about being, I would suggest you practice first just to get the hang of it. Now, see what I'm doing here. I'm going in and out. There. If you are using darning wool, wool rather than thread, you might want to leave a little loop at the end to allow shrinkage. But because this is cotton and it's not going to shrink, I'm not bothering. A little bit there. Same thing. And in out. Now it's up to you how neat this is. It's on your sock for this one so nobody's really going to see it. But some people like to make them really neat. I mean my mother's darning is a poem. She's the neatest darner. They're little works of art and she even does them in matching colours so they don't show. And my grandmother and aunt were the same. They were, you know, you made your own socks and you darned them. Um, and I was taught to darn at school by my matron, Mrs Brain Nichols, who had no kneecaps. She was actually a really nice woman. She was scary at first, but she was very kind. And she taught us how to darn socks. So, it's a worthwhile skill to know because you can rescue favourite items of clothing when they wear. Um, I, I, in the winter, I wear knee-length board socks and they're quite expensive. Um, and I find by darning them, I can extend the life of a pair by probably five or six years, um, if not slightly more. Right, here we're going. You'll have to excuse Holly after last after the earlier disaster on the other sock. I'm going to ignore her. Right. So we we've got our threads. Now I am going to start. Oh, I've got caught. Cool. Have I got caught? Cool? Come on. Come out. There we go. Try not to get your thread tangled, which is what happens when you don't keep a close eye on it. There we go. Pull it through. Okay. I'm only going to do it with five. I'm not actually sure if I shouldn't be going slightly closer here. So let's see. Right, here we go. Now, I'm going to start diagonally opposite. And there's a reason for that, but it will become apparent in a minute. I'm going to start here. Just go across. Now, here's where the weaving comes in. Over, under over, under, over, right down to the end, then I'm going to nip in like I did before and pull across, there we go, then down and up, let me get that done so I can, there we are, right, so I went over here, so I go under, over, under, over, and I alternate. And as I'm doing that, I just use my needle to push the threads nice and snugly up against them. When you first do it, do a practice yarn, a uh, practice darn to get the feel of it, and you can do it more loosely. And you'll find that once you get practiced at it, you can do it quite close together. You don't have to. Darns, you know, especially sock darns, they don't really matter. They, they're functional and that's that's what you want. You want them to work. The handle's just fallen off my darning mushroom inside my sock. Right, another loop. And I go over, under, over, under, over, just like before. Do my little bit at there. Now, you can see where I'm using quite a thick thread. You wouldn't want to use ordinary thread for that. You would want to use something quite thick. Because if you use it slightly thicker, if you use something too thick, though, you might find it quite hard to pull between the links here. So you've got to get the balance. You've got to have the piece of thread to be thick enough to fill the gap in, but to be thin enough so that when you put the needle through, the thread pulls it. You couldn't do it with string, for example. The string wouldn't pull through. Um, and these are quite nice little socks. Right, again, so on this, going this way, I go under and over, under, 
on earth if I can do it. There we are. Be patient. Don't try and rush it. And now, can you see what I'm doing? As, as the free thread threatens to go in, I'm just pulling it so that I'm not sewing that bit. Right. Now, learning to do things like this. Global warming, climate change, is a result of the idea rampant rampant capitalist consumerist stuff and one of the most radical things that we can do is understand that we are all from birth conditioned to consume things to buy things to keep the economy going so we've got into the habit in the last 40 years of when we our socks get a pair of a hole in them we throw them away and we have another pair, woven by machine, flown all the way from Thai, Thailand and China or whatever. When in reality, if you mend your own socks, you can keep them going for quite a long time. And then, because you do keep them going for quite a long time, you can actually buy you know, nicer quality socks that feel nice on. In the winter, you can buy wolf socks that are a little bit thick and cosy on your feet. And look after them a bit better. Now, coming to the end here. Now, this is why I wanted you to start diagonally opposite. Because when I have put my last thread in there, like that, there is my little darn, all neat. And I'm going to tie this bit of thread into the beginning of it, at the beginning of the darn, in another little granny knot. And I'm going to end up with a nice secure darn. I'm going to trim the end off like that. Put my needle where I can find the bloody thing. There we go. Now that didn't take too long. That is not a terribly good darn, but I'm sincerely hoping that you can see it more clearly. OK, and then I will retrieve the mushroom from inside my sock as I pull the sock the other way round. Now, you can't see the darn, but I've done it over a coffee stain. Obviously, if there was a stain there, what you would be able to see through the hole would be a neat little darn. But there is no hole, so that's like, reinforced. Now, you can do it the other way around and have the darn on the, the outside, but you would just end up with your knot visible. And that, that depends on you. There are, there are ways that you can finish it without, you know, without making that obvious. You can sew it in and you can do all sorts of things. But if you just want to mend your socks, don't worry about any of that. Just put the mend in, put the darn in, have a little knot, and you've mended your socks. And you can do that on the toe, or the heel, or the side, on the elbows of a favourite jumper, perhaps, that you like. You can darn it instead of putting patches on, which can be uncomfortable for some people. Little holes in your trousers. One of my work trousers, which I'm sure you've all seen, has got a bright red darn on it. Because I had a hole. I couldn't mend it neatly. It was going to show, so I thought, I'll put a darn on it, and it'll look slightly funky. It's a really useful skill. If you do it, you can save yourself a lot of money doing it. And you know what? You can spend it. Holly, shut up. Shut up. You can spend it on expensive hobbies like a very barky dog. But that's the idea. Spend your money on things that bring you joy. And learning to darn, sitting and darning a sock in the evening can be quite a contemplative exercise. It can be quite calming and quite soothing. And you feel like you're wearing a little halo when you're done. I hope that helps.